Hi everyone. Um, a bit of a sensation on Wednesday with uh, the news of um, the Google, uh, no, owned by Google, but it's the um, Alpha Zero uh, chess engine uh, playing against the Stockfish and making a fantastic score. Um, 28 wins uh, and 72 draws. It's uh, no losses against Stockfish. Uh, which um, I would say was the strongest uh, chess engine we had. Uh, so it's big, big news. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure whether I'm rambling to myself or if anyone is actually listening. So uh, if you are listening, um, give me a little chair in the comments. Um, and then I'll keep keep on talking. Yeah, okay, so we have people. Thank you. Thank you. We have people. Yeah, so uh, we're going to be discussing the uh, Alpha uh, Zero and it's um, 10 public games uh, against Stockfish. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing more games, um, but as of now, uh, these, uh, these guys have, um, are keeping their cards close to their chests and um, they are waiting on publishing the, their paper and what they have discovered in some kind of fancy um, uh, fancy magazine or whatever you call it in the academic world. Um, so uh, what we have for today is um, a couple of games. I'm not gonna have time to go through all 10 games we, we, we have. Uh, and I'm actually going to focus on not the big magnificent attacking chess uh, although that is uh, an eye-opener I think for for a lot of people uh, but but I'm going to focus on more the uh, strategic element uh, of uh, Alpha Zero and how it managed to outplay uh, Stockfish in a very humane fashion um, uh, several times uh, during the match um, I'll also talk uh, quite a bit about what is this uh, Alpha Alpha Zero. Um, I'm happy to take computer questions, um, but I'm not going to be able to answer most of them. Uh, so I'm also hoping that we have some kind of uh, discussion um, in the chat in which I can get some questions and somebody else, somebody who, who knows this stuff, uh, more than me uh, can help uh, answer it. Um, yeah. I, I can say a lot of uh, clever things about the chess implications, uh, but as in, in terms of how this actually works, I'm, I'm not quite certain uh, myself. Uh, that is not my area of expertise. Uh, what I understand is that it has played many, many million chess games against itself in trying to learn the game and trying to understand, uh, I suppose, the strategies. Um, and I mean, I'm a grandmaster, but I, I have not played through a million chess games in my life. Uh, so already uh, in the simulation, it has a lot more chess experience than me. But on the other hand, you would think that the games I have seen and the games I have learned from uh, may have been more um, thematic 
uh, than than the the kind of brute force learning uh, learning by doing uh, method. Uh, we have a comment in the chat. Um, Valag is uh, is still in denial. Uh, he cannot believe that Stockfish lost with such a score difference. And, and I, I I slept in on Wednesday. Uh, I mean, I, I wasn't up until noon and I was waking up to essentially Armageddon that this new force had just come and demolished uh, what was our, our kind of strongest uh, chess playing entity. Um, yeah. Um, uh, Valnag also comments on something that's, um, that's actually something I want to bring up. And he, he, he says it must be some kind of hardware, uh, handicap. Um, and in fact, for sure there is, um, Alpha Zero was running on something called TPU something, uh, which is one of these computer things that I have no chance of understanding. But I think essentially Alpha Zero was running on something completely insane. Um, whereas uh, Stockfish was running on um, 64 processors, I think. Um, but part of the problem here is that I read somewhere that Stockfish can only do 128 processors. And after that, it, it, it's diminishing returns. And after that, it doesn't actually help anymore. Okay, so here's the comments helping me out. So it's TPU is a tensor processor unit optimized for neural web networks. And of course, I have no idea what neural networks is. Um, Yeah, so I, I'm gonna talk a bit about um, uh, about the chess implications. Uh, Kaspar is asking, how does it learn the the artificial inten intelligence? How does it learn what the time control is? Uh, but that strikes me as one of presumably one of the easier things, uh, telling it that uh, the time control was one minute per move. Uh, and that's also an interesting fact uh, in terms of uh, understanding the, the level we're talking about. Um, yeah, so Sessa is saying that TPUs are a bit like GPUs, but then you're already overestimating my technical knowledge because I, I don't know what a GPU is. Um, but he's saying you could run something like Alpha Zero on publicly available GPUs, but it would be slower and more power usage. And this, I think, from a chess perspective, this is going to be one of the main things, whether or not, it's not really about whether or not Stockfish had a fair match with, uh, with Alpha Zero, because I think probably we can conclude that it wasn't really a fair match, uh, the hardware difference uh, was quite significant. But on the other hand, it's uh, very interesting to see an engine going on its absolute maximum potential. Uh, and, and as I was saying, the, the stockfish cannot kind of scale up uh, in the same fashion that um, this Alpha Zero could. And and what's interesting from a, a chess player perspective is whether Alpha Zero can scale down equally well as what Stockfish can. Because Stockfish, I have Stockfish on my computer, my simplest computer I can get in the store for a couple hundred dollars. I can have Stockfish and it's going to play chess better than any human. And I, I think one of the interesting things is whether or not we can get this Alpha Zero technology, which I don't really understand how it works, uh, whether you can get that down and run it on a very ordinary uh, laptop computer. Um, let's see the comments. Um, 
Uh, Stockfish didn't have an opening book, says Move by Move. Um, yeah, uh, Alpha Zero did not have an opening book in traditional sense, but Alpha Zero had done a lot of training games in which it had um, a kind of decided what are the best openings. So it, it, it had run a lot of uh, simulations to determine uh, what its favorite openings uh, would be. Um, I thought Stockfish had an opening book or maybe there were was predetermined openings because Stockfish playing the openings without opening book it, it, it's not very good and I, and I thought the, the openings uh, of the games that were published uh, were normal. And I'm not sure Stockfish would be able to play normal openings without having some kind of opening book. Uh, Jason uh, asks, how long would one of today's premier players survive against this new supercomputer? Um, would they be squashed in every game in 20, 30 moves? And my answer to that is absolutely not. I mean, people would still be able to play against this supercomputer. And I, I think some people have said, uh, kind of said that this is the end of humans being able to, to challenge the computer. Uh, I, I think that time had already passed. The time in which a computer could beat now, a, a human could beat the computer in a game. Um, I think we already passed that point. But I do not believe that this, uh, at, at the very least, this version of Alpha Zero, that it would win every single game against a human. That I do not believe. Uh, so, so I believe that this, uh, this uh, Alpha Zero may be unbeatable. Uh, but it's not like it's going to win every single game, uh, even against humans. They both had no opening books, uh, which was confirmed by the developer on Twitter. Okay, that's interesting. But in that case, I also think that it, it, Stockfish playing the opening as well as it did was was was, was pretty good. Um, this stream will be archived. There was a question that it's going to be available on the <laughs> Norwegian YouTube channel. Maybe maybe the the traditional chess.com channel as well. Um, yeah, so an entire sleeve ha has the same kind of comment I was saying that the real question and, and I'm quoting the real question is how long it will take to bring this technology to market and and as as a second to uh, at the very least uh, being interested in in analyzing chess openings for the world's best players uh, I think that's going to be the main concern for a lot of people is is how, when and how can I use uh, this stuff myself? Uh, yeah, so um, this is kind of the introduction talk uh, and now I'm gonna um, uh, I'm gonna have um, I'm, I'm just gonna look through some games I think uh, and this first game is um, a black win, uh, which is impressive in its own right. Uh, Alpha Zero had um, three black wins uh, and 47 draws uh, in the 100 game match. Um, so, so we're going to look at it. And, and I think what's interesting is that Alpha Go, having no opening book, uh, decides that the best way to face e4 is the Berlin defense, uh, which a lot of top players have been saying for a couple of years now, uh, but it, it's always nice to have it confirmed. Um, so uh, it's a Berlin defense from Alpha Zero, but it also shows 
that you can win with black in the Berlin, which uh, I have been saying for some time. I have some nice black wins in it. Um, and um, and AlphaGo proves it. Uh, so this th C3 move is, is quite um, unusual. Uh, but we're going to... The opening is not really the most interesting part of this game. I'm gonna, gonna go a bit forward uh, until we get this position, uh, which is really blocked. Uh, Stockfish going c4, threatening c5, pushing the bishop away from d6. And now alpha zero goes c5. And after d5, we have a very blocked position. Now, um, I, I've been going through some of the games with my own stockfish, which of course is nowhere near the level uh, of the stockfish that was playing the match. But I think it's interesting to kind of uh, compare. Uh, so we also see that the, the stockfish in, in chess.com's um, uh, graphics uh, is saying that it's point, point 0.34. You can see on the, on the bottom left. It's saying point 0.34, uh, 31, sorry. Uh, and this is just interesting from a positional sense because that's basically going to be stockfish in general thinks that this is a favorable pawn structure, uh, a favorable position for white. Uh, and if you were to give this position to a human, uh, they would uh, say that this is one of the positions in which Stockfish might be wrong. Uh, because we will see the... Uh, blue wasn't really my intention. Uh, we will see the bishop on c8 black having the bishop pair uh, and we will say that this bishop on c8 is unopposed uh, so there's potential for this bishop to do something on the white squares without having an enemy bishop uh, countering uh, white square attacks now the other bishop on d6 is not the proudest piece uh, on the board uh, it's severely blocked by its own pawns and that is probably why Stockfish is saying that this is favorable for white. But uh, this is actually known from, for many, many, many years uh, from a famous Capablanca game in which this bishop on g3 is basically as inefficient as the bishop on d6. This bishop is being blocked by uh, the black pawns. Uh, and it really doesn't have too much of a future just like black's bishop on d6 so this is one of those very interesting situations in which stockfish is misevaluating the position it doesn't understand the the long-term strategic dangers um, of the the opponent having the, uh, the bishop pair and the unopposed um light squared bishop Um, so, um, so yeah, I, I think, uh, and it's also interesting that, um, uh, Alpha Zero gets into this position and, and kind of says, uh, okay, you think this is good for, for you? Uh, I'm happy as well. And, and I think maybe, um, Alpha Zero uh, is more human in, uh, positional play uh, and, and I think at the very least we don't know how Alpha Zero evaluated this position I can only double check what my own version of Stockfish uh, says but my impression is that it's not an accident that Alpha Zero won this game uh, and, and probably it has it's some of the holes that um, Stockfish has in positional evaluations may be uh, addressed uh, in, in this Alpha Zero. Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go forward a bit uh, and just make notice of this uh, evaluation bar on the left-hand side because it's gonna get a little shock when it realizes that the white pieces aren't really accomplishing too much um, 
Okay, so the 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 low depth version uh, we have on the side is not really picking up on it, but this is the moment when um, my stockfish started to realize that this isn't working out. White doesn't really have a plan. White doesn't have any good squares for his pieces. He's just standing there uh, waiting and uh, black is kind of standing there but black is doing some progress for every move right now black is doing uh co um, covering the the e uh, e5 pawn so that you can in the future play the pawn up to uh f5 so this is the the moment where where my stockfish realized that this is just equal uh but that is also wrong that is also wrong because black is better black is the only one who can uh start moving forward with his pieces uh and so even an equal evaluation here from from stockfish would be uh too much uh so this is um interesting from um from an evaluation uh, standpoint. So actually here, uh, black wants to play f5, but then bishop h4 asks a question to the rook on e7, and uh, it will probably be a draw by repetition. So what uh, AlphaGo does is play h6, h and now it, it creates a very strange sequence because uh, white goes bishop h4 to prevent f5 black goes rook f7 preparing f5 and then white goes back saying that if you now play f5 i'm gonna have some attack uh, winning the pawn on e5 so they went back and forth for a little while uh, and then um, it's alpha zero who decides no i'm going to play on so alpha zero repeated moves and then went out of the repetition and the same thing happened on the next move. They repeated moves, and then in the end, AlphaGo decides, no, I want to play for more. Um, so probably it has a decent con contempt value as well. Um, this is uh, a value you can give. I know that you can give Stockfish kind of a contempt value in terms of avoiding draws whenever possible. Uh, and, and here, Stockfish is the one getting the... Um, the, uh, the the contempt against him uh, so uh, and now we're going to see black uh, calmly improving his pieces uh, this bishop on d6 is not fantastic but neither is the bishop on g3 uh, the the low depth uh, stockfish on, on the left hand side still thinks white is better uh, but that is not going to last for long and i think also the regrouping that AlphaGo does here is very, very nice. So let's go back just to make sure everyone sees that the knight started on f8 and in a couple of moves, it's gonna be in a fantastic spot because gradually the knight moves over and I think when we get to this position, we see that black has just been able to make so much progress the the knight on uh d6 is fantastic attacking both the pawns on on c4 and e4 um and and even worse the bishop the bishop that was supposed to be so bad on d6 has come over to h6 and has a good diagonal uh whereas the, uh, the white bishop is still knocking on uh, uh, on stone, knocking on this black pawn structure uh, with the pawn on e5. Uh, so um, Stockfish was just massively outplayed. And still, even in this situation, he, he didn't really understand what was going on. So um, my 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 stockfish check with my computer it was going minus 0.4 so stockfish was realizing that this isn't really the what i was hoping for but still it doesn't understand that in this position 
I'm going to say that black is probably uh, strategically winning. Um, I, I, I think the white pieces are basically going back and forth and have been going back and forth for, for quite some time. Uh, and black does have plans to progress. He's just very good at taking his time. And that's something I noticed in some of the other games as well, is that Alpha Zero is not in a rush. He will calmly outplay you uh, and he will not rush and, and he will um, improve his pieces. And, and what I actually, as, as a Norwegian chess commentator, I've been, been used to calling it the Magnus Carlsen calm collected let's improve uh, our pieces and see what happens uh, and that's pretty much what what uh, what happened here i mean black is just improving his pieces gradually uh whereas white is is stuck um Yeah, okay, no, this is an interesting uh, comment from R Rope Stop. Um, he says, I don't expect they explicitly coded any contempt in Alpha Zero. And that's, that's of course, true. I mean, if it's self-learning, then then nobody has told it to be contemptful to, to Stockfish. But, but on the other hand, then I think it's strange that he repeated moves. Why would he repeat moves? It, he would only repeat moves if he thought those were the best moves, right? So if he thought those were the best moves, why would he suddenly change and go out of the repetition? Um, for good reason, I, I might add. Um, afterwards, why wouldn't he just go out of the repetition immediately? I don't know. That's going to be almost a philosophical question. Uh, Donks um, is saying that it could be Google engineers interfering to avoid the repetition to see who understands the position better. Uh, that sounds like conspiracy theories to me. Um, it could be. I don't know. I, I don't know how this kind of stuff works. Um, but but I think it's an interesting thing that there were a couple of repetitions in which um, in which Google Zero played on. Yeah, an entire sleeve is saying that would be academic fraud. So it sounds sounds like a bit too much. But at the at the very least, it's something that the the Google people actually could explain. Uh, why it repeated moves and then changed it, its mind in what was an identical position. Yeah, because like uh, Grandilu is... Um... Uh, Grandilu says the best move is still the best move after two repetitions. But then it's not the best move anymore since it would allow a draw. But in that case, it would be misevaluating the position to start with because the reason they were repeating was because with best play, it was equal. Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 I think we've stumbled upon something interesting uh, and I don't have the answers. Uh, I'm being told to scroll up to what Cert4 says. Cert4. Maybe it has learned that if you repeat moves and the other side doesn't make the right move, you gain a bigger edge. That trick may have worked when it was playing uh, against itself. Yeah, I don't know. So you play a move and then if the 
if your opponent plays the best move, you can go back and have another go. Whereas if the opponent doesn't play the best move, you get a better position than what you would have got had you played uh, the move that avoided repetition in the first place. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but anyhow, the game, the regrouping, the, the outplaying of Stockfish, uh, I think is fantastic. Um, and I'll just do the, the end of the game to kind of show uh, for completion. Um, the bishop uh, exchanged itself, uh, uh, taking more control over these two squares. Um, interesting, but at this point, uh, even the, the most normal computers are, are understanding that this is um, really, really troublesome. So it started out about here, uh, giving minus 0.5, and in three moves, uh, even my stockfish was saying that this is a complete disaster for white. Uh, and so what happened was that they exchanged one pair of rooks in the G file, making sure that black wasn't attacking against the white king. Uh, but then we had another rook coming, another exchange, uh, but ultimately, what happened was that this ending is just a disaster for white because of these uh, pawns on uh, c4 and e4. And now we see the hero of the middle game, the unopposed light squared bishop, is going to come around and start gobbling up pawns. Uh, and that's essentially what happened. And uh, at this point, even my stockfish is saying big, big, big trouble. Um, uh, and I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Uh, in this occasion, I, I tried um, I tried to see if I could improve stockfish's uh, play. So I, I was checking the line with bishop takes e5. Uh, if you take back the bishop, there's a fork. So you have to go into an end game. And I was wondering maybe uh, Stockfish or even Alpha Zero had misevaluated this um, opposite colored bishop end game. Um, and after analyzing it, I discovered that no, this is just winning for black. But the way it's winning for black is, is, um, is very instructive. Uh, and, and it's kind of just using both sides of the board to gradually make progress. So uh, at some point, black is going to be able to play b4. You cannot really stop it. If you take on b4, then you undouble the black pawns. So you should sacrifice the your pawn on a3 and hope to make some kind of barrier along this diagonal. Uh, but it's just very, very good endgame technique here uh, where you play uh, f4 at the right moment. Uh, the king cannot take because then the black king is going to help its pawn queen. So you need to take with the pawn. And then we get this kind of situation where black goes back with his king, uh, attacking now, going for the h4 pawn. Uh, and this is, I mean, it's fantastic endgame play, but it's a uh, best move. Actually, here there is uh, a Zugzwang. You cannot protect both the h4 pawn and the f4 pawn because uh, the bishop has to guard uh, the a1 square as well. So you get back the, the original pawn you sacrificed and then gradually you get the other pawn uh, as well because... You get this uh, check, which uh, blocks the bishop from um, covering a1. And with three pawns up, um, then the opposite colored bishops are, are not a draw. So I, I tried finding some kind of improved defense for, for Stockfish, but um, I couldn't make it happen. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to go down. Uh, so 
somebody is saying that Nils's explanation makes the most sense. I'm going to see if I can find what Nils wrote. Interesting from Heiliger Bimbam is that Alpha Zero does not evaluate the position like normal engines. It evaluates the position based on how big the chances are to win. It does? How do you know? You know maybe I would know as well if I knew something about computer science. Yeah, I think I still think it's a bit of a mystery. I'd like to see somebody who actually knew what was going on say something about it, uh, about the repetition. Anyway, uh, back to to the game. So uh, this kind of going into the opposite colored uh, bishop endgame uh, wasn't really going to work, uh, but neither was uh, the way uh, Stockfish ended up playing. So uh, he might as well gone for the bishop ending, and we would have seen. Uh, a very nice stylistic uh, win in the end game. Whereas here, uh, black just won the entire kingdom because after knight a3, bishop d7, you cannot protect a4. But more importantly, after you lose a4, you're also going to lose um, on c4 with the bishop coming in from behind. Uh, so Stockfish just played bishop e3 and um, well actually we did get a, a bishop same game uh, at the end uh, because in this position uh, alpha go just played knight e4 uh, and i think with a pawn up uh, I, i'm not sure a human would do that but he just knew that well this bishop ending i'm going to win oh sorry um let's go quick he just knew this bishop ending, I'm going to win. So he played bishop knight e4, uh, exchanging into a, an opposite colored bishop endgame. Um, with just a pawn more. I mean, he's just a pawn up in an opposite colored bishop ending. Uh, I, I don't see a human making that decision. Uh, but he was right. Uh, a fantastic endgame player also, uh, alpha zero. Um and just winning this uh, this opposite colored bishop endgame very easily, uh, coming with the king. I don't know if Stockfish could have defended better. I, I would assume so. But there's kind of the dual threat of going with the king harassing the bishop and the threat of the king going here. And, and even if white plays something like um, king e3, king d5, you cannot kind of sorry you cannot stop the king from going both ways um yeah i'm very happy people are discussing in the uh in the chats but some of it is too over my head and i i just have to admit that um Yeah, their evaluation is a win percentage and not a score for each move. Um, and I was also told that it, it doesn't really have the traditional algorithm. I, have I understood it correctly that Alpha Zero is using Monte Carlo simulations from the current positions to decide where to go next? I, 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 that's what I've been told. Um, and and f for that reason alone, I think it's interesting. Um, but but I, pro I, I guess this technology have existed for, for some time. But just the idea that you're programming the chess engines in a different way than what has almost been exclusively done before. 
is uh, is fantastic. Uh, so Dragon versus Dota is saying it's Monte Carlo simulations, but it's weighted by the neural net, so it's not completely random. Uh, you lost me at neural net. <laughs> Uh, if you read how AlphaGo works, it will help you. It will also help if I read the uh, the the fifteen research um, pa pages of research they they published, um, which I had intended to do. I printed it out, and I was gonna. I said to myself, "Okay, this sounds very important. You really should read whatever is going on here." Mm. I didn't really do it. I, I was more interested in the chess games themselves. Um, yeah, so this opposite colored bishop endgame, pawn up, but AlphaGo just won it so easily. Uh, so I, I assume that he just knew that the opposite colored bishop endgame was, uh, was winning. And, uh, well, at this point, probably even I could, could win it. Uh, and, and Stockfish... Um, Resigned. Okay, I'm I'm gonna find the. Um, uh, Cesar has uh, some uh, some comments. This is a large departure from how every other successful engine has worked before. There have been eight engines uh, based on the same principle. Uh, but none that are as good as Stockfish. So that I just find very interesting that we have a new way of um, of coding um, or have making chess engines. I, I, I just use them. I, I don't really know how they're made. <laughs> kind of like how I eat sausages. Um... Yeah, I, I'm going to go to the next game. I'm going to find the, the next game I want to look at. So this was a very nice strategic uh, black win from Alpha Zero. Um, there are tons of extremely interesting, um, um, extremely interesting um, uh, attacking wins. Uh, I, some of the most spectacular attacks you have ever seen. Um, but I'm going to focus more on the positional because my thinking is this. We already knew that with uh, extreme processing power, the computers are just insane at attacking chess and tactics and, and uh, mating the king and, and so on and so forth. And, and what I find... Uh, more interesting is the fact that AlphaGo seems to, or this Alpha Zero uh, seems to um, kind of correct some of the positional misevaluations that Stockfish has had. So, so I'm going to uh, change uh, the game uh, to this one. Uh, and it's uh, French defense uh, with Alpha Zero being uh, white. And I think the first interesting thing here is Bishop D3. So naturally the Bishop is better on D3 than on E2. But the kind of human reason normally not to play Bishop D3 would be that you're afraid of being uh, stormed on the queen side uh, and uh, getting into trouble that way. Uh, and actually this bishop d3 is interesting because it has been played at the highest level quite recently uh, uh, by a certain Mr. Gary Kasparov, uh, who I believe most chess players have heard of. Uh, and, um, uh, and, and yeah, so AlphaGo uh, copies uh, Kasparov. Uh, that, that's a nice headline. Uh, anyway, uh, Kasparov playing against Karana. Uh, Karana plays B5. Uh, and in fact, none of the top level players having this position with black 
has played c4. And this, I think, is one of the uh, positional misevaluations uh, Stockfish has had for some time. Uh, and that's also why um, humans are looking to get these positions, because um, if their opponents only trust the engine, uh, they might get to, into a favorable position. So my hypothesis is that uh, Stockfish in general is uh, uh, underestimating the power of having um, a static uh, pawn center space advantage. And uh, basically that's exactly what uh, AlphaGo is um, demonstrating in, uh, in this game. So uh, we see uh, Stockfish with black going with the pawns, trying to attack on the queen side, while um, AlphaGo is doing the king side attack, uh, going f5, trying to weaken this pawn chain. Uh, so instead of having to attack f7, um, uh, he can now attack e6 instead after trading on e6 and it's easier to get access to this e6 pawn how do we get access well okay we could get a knight to g5 so on and so forth but there's an attack looming on the queen side uh, and um and so this move is maybe easy but it's brilliant still it's just bishop d1 the only square the bishop could move to without being captured and it's just about getting the knight over to the king side and also attacking uh, the pawn on e6 so b4 takes takes the knight comes and uh, stockfish we see that the low depth stockfish is evaluating about 0 0.3 in favor of white uh, but in reality, probably it's much, much worse. Um, and for instance, let's take an example variation. Uh, knight b6, c3. Uh, but white just keeps his pawn chain, knowing that he has the space advantage in the center, uh, limiting his uh, opponent's options, having more space to maneuver behind his pawns, trying to generate an attack uh, against the black king. And if we kind of follow the, the logical continuation, then very soon uh, black is going to be in huge trouble. So I just checked this line with uh, my own computer. And basically, after a little while, it started realizing that the white attack on the king side, having a lot of pieces uh, ready to uh, contribute, in this attack uh, is just so much more powerful than uh, black uh, and, and kind of his attempt at attacking the pawn uh, on, on b2 um, so yeah uh, already in the pawn structure it's it's troublesome for black and it seems to me that alpha zero understood this pawn structure better than um than stockfish and i'm some of the other games i'm going to go through it is also going to have the very same pawn structure uh, and illustrate pretty much uh the same point so what happened here is that stockfish made a pawn sacrifice in order to get his uh pieces into play uh the low step uh low depth stockfish is saying that okay white is better but it's not a disaster um Whereas what AlphaGo demonstrated in the game is that uh, the important part here is still that the uh, white pawn shield is uh, more aggressive, uh, values uh, the space advantage that white has. Uh, hi, uh, Bim Bam in, in the Twitch chat is saying that Alpha is just flawless and we might be close to the end of chess development. 
Um, I'm not that much of a of a pessimist. I, I still thought that there were some some strange decisions uh, made by Alpha Zero, um, and presumably, if this is an Alpha Zero version in which it has been training for what what they were saying that like four hours, uh, it, it seems reasonable to believe that giving it a bit more time to practice, it would become even stronger. Uh, and then it's also the question of whether you can commercialize it, whether this can be used by uh, chess players for tournament chess. Uh, Catch is asking, do you think this finding is in any way going to help make chess more uh, draw free uh, and um, I'm not sure but right this moment I would say yes because right now AlphaGo has demonstrated a top level uh, in which it won 50% 50% of its white games uh, it won against Stockfish which was previously basically regarded as the truth um, and, and I think uh, some of the attacking games uh, we've seen in um, among the example games, I think some of the attacking games there is, are absolutely magnificent. And, and I think it's going to open up for some, some new opening uh, theory developments just based on what we know now. I, I'm betting that uh, there are people analyzing the, the Queen's Indian with D5 pawn sacrifices uh, because Alpha uh, Alpha Zero won like three games in which it uh, sacrificed a pawn, uh, in which Stockfish said, no, no, I'm completely fine. And then he was just completely crushed off the board. Um, so right now I'm thinking uh, that there's potential for, for less draws. Um, but on the other hand, if everybody gets the same stuff, if everybody has uh, the same uh, help uh, from their computer with this new software, uh, then probably it's not going to make too much of a difference for, for tournament players. Uh, Sessa is saying that DeepMind is not in the business of selling software. They're in the business of uh, artificial intelligence uh, research. So it's very unlikely they will try to sell this. Um, and that I agree with 100%. But, but that's also what makes it interesting, I think, is can we get a version of this software uh, for laptops basically something tournament players can use and it's not at all certain that the answer to that will be yes so it's a very interesting develop development in terms of we've seen chess being played at a higher level than we have ever seen before but we we might not get the luxury of seeing this amazing engine play um, so many, um, uh, so, uh, um, so many chess games that we would like. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to go through this game. Uh, basically, White got a pawn, uh, kept his uh, spatial advantage. And uh, what's interesting is kind of how it how it developed. Uh, because we got some trades and essentially we got this position in which uh, White is a pawn up, but Black has the unopposed light squared bishop. So it's not really at all clear whether white will manage to strike the, to to str to to get the win um 
But once again, I think it's very interesting to see how patient uh, this Alpha Zero engine is. And it just very gradually improved its position and uh, managed to um, create uh, a win. Um, and I'm not going to spend too much time on every single move, but kind of very gradually it uh, builds its advantage, improves his king, improves the bishop, improves the pawn, the knight. And then at the opportune moment, it's, uh, you know, offering, offering stuff if you want it, uh, but also actually making progress. Uh, and um, here it decides, let's just give this pawn on C3 because it realizes that it has a plan uh, to get the knight over to the other side and uh the the low depth stockfish is giving 0 0.0 plus for white and um yeah just alpha zero i think was completely sure it, it was going to win this game at this point i, I think the the end game technique uh has been was very impressive especially how patient um uh, Alpha Zero was in, in kind of gradually improving pieces. And now when the the rook comes over uh, on the the king side, yeah, I don't remember the game exactly, but basically we had this same position earlier with the rook on c3 instead of, uh, of f7. Uh, and it's gone... 10 moves and it's not really looking like alpha zero is doing anything special um but then suddenly uh he sits with a knight on c5 which looks pretty good with a king that can go up to uh, g6 uh the bishop being locked uh on c8 dominated by uh, the white knight and um yeah and then just going into a rook end game uh, in which it, it knew it was going to win. And, and I mean, in terms of kind of the best play, uh, even here, Stockfish is saying this is winning for white. It's saying go king g4 uh, and basically there's nothing black can do. But instead, uh, AlphaGo allows this g6 resource which which kind of was supposed to prolong the game um and i i don't know um stockfish is saying it was a mistake to allow this g6 thing but on the other hand it's not like white was ever in danger of not winning the game it took forever in terms of it's been 40 moves since we had this position uh, and it's not like it, it looked like there was too much more progress he needed to do. Uh, but, but 40 moves later, he's still very patient, gradually taking all the pawns. Uh, and then at some point, you know, Stockfish just realizes that these pawns, I'm not going to stop. Uh, but still, AlphaGo is going very much back and forth. I mean here having this maneuver of going with the king and then back to d4 it's very hard for me to believe that that is the quickest route uh to win uh but i can on the other hand i can easily believe that it's a route to win so um i'm not sure it's flawless uh, if it is flawless then it's just on a level beyond uh, human understanding because some of these maneuvers in what was otherwise easily winning positions uh, is, is just insane <laughs> yeah it doesn't care how much the advantage is it only cares that it's winning so uh, it's patient and it's 
cumbersome in some ways in, in getting the, the win. Yeah, uh, and uh, chess player in the chess TV chat is saying it would be funny to see all the mistakes Stockfish uh, catches from Alpha Zero. Uh, and I mean, I played through the games with my own Stockfish engine, and certainly Stockfish did think that some of the moves from, from AlphaGo were not the best ones. Um, partially because, of course, they have uh, a difference of opinion. Uh, that's how Alpha Zero managed to win so many games. Uh, it, it has to mean that they differ in opinion that AlphaGo believes something is good for him while, um, while Stockfish uh, thinks he's okay. Uh, and that's actually going to be our next example. Uh, a game... Uh, sorry. Uh, a game in which... Um, Alpha Go Alpha Zero is just outplaying the guy when Stockfish thought he was doing okay. Uh, okay, so this is the next one. Uh, Casper is asking, does your Stockfish have 64 cores? Uh, and that is a big, big no uh, from me. Um, so I, I understand that my Stockfish is not at the level of the Stockfish that was used uh, in the uh, experiment. Uh, but I, th st I mean, it's based on the same code. So I think it's interesting to, to, to compare anyhow. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. Uh, Basics is asking how much did your stockfish agree or disagree with the stockfish moves, um, and that's uh, just as interesting, uh, I guess. But uh, as was the point that was made earlier, is that my stockfish is not as strong as the stockfish that was used uh, for these games. Uh, so it could be that there are things that the, the stockfish playing Alpha Zero understood, which my stockfish was just not strong enough to understand. Uh, okay, I, I'm gonna. I think this is maybe the the most. Uh, it's the second most interesting game, I think, at least of the positional ones. I'm gonna fast forward to this position, uh, which is very interesting. But it's the same theme that I was talking about earlier. It's about the advanced uh, pawn on e5 having the uh, central space advantage and using it to develop a king, uh, an attack against the black king. And as you may notice, uh, in this example, that has come at a cost. So there's a pawn, an extra pawn on uh, c4, or maybe I should say there's an extra pawn on c6, because otherwise, uh, other than that, the, the position is basically symmetrical. Um, and then some would actually say that, well, black would be better off without this pawn because right now it's massively blocking the bishop on uh, b7. And I think that's another thing I noticed in these example games uh, is that this bishop on b7, black's light squared bishop, was really having a miserable time. Uh, when playing uh, the Alpha Go, the Alpha Zero. Uh, and uh, initially, my stockfish is giving minus 0.6 uh, 
here in um, in Black's favor, uh, but it gradually drops to about minus um, 0.38. But minus 0.38 is still Black advantage. So in this position, Stockfish thinks it's better with Black. Uh, and then gradually as you go deeper, when, when you just enter the moves uh, as they were played, they are all top choices of the computer. Uh, and at this point, uh, the, the computer kind of starts out thinking that black is still better. Uh, but now after thinking for a while, it drops to zero. Uh, so after thinking for a while here, the computer is saying, okay, maybe, maybe it's equal. Uh, but it's still not saying that it's better for white. Um, and, and that's what AlphaGo managed to, to do, is that he won this with white. Making it look like a complete genius. Um, so the big question here is whether or not to play H5. And I think from a human perspective, probably we would play H5. Uh, and that means that it's interesting to see what, um, how AlphaGo would have proceeded with against H5. So you, you would think that probably you want to do something like um, Queen F3 and try to play G4 and say that Put, uh, playing this pawn out has weakened uh, the g6 square and maybe it's easier to attack the king uh, but but it's still a very tricky position um, I'm gonna say white is better uh, by the reasoning that uh, alpha go won a very alpha zero won a very similar position but I would be I actually think it's a pity that Stockfish didn't play h5 because I think from a human perspective, it's more easy to understand what happened in the game uh, after bishop f8. Because what um, AlphaGo did here, Alpha0, uh, what he did was that he played h5 naturally and then he put uh, his queen on the h file Queen f6 is very nice, saying that if you take this queen, then both your bishops are, are basically being uh, running out of moves. Uh, so uh, black cannot really take this queen. And we end up with uh, white uh, getting a slightly improved pawn structure, having now the attacking target on uh, e6. Uh, Stockfish still thinks it's equal. It's saying 0, 0.00. It thinks, okay, well, I'm not that concerned. Uh, and then uh, AlphaGo plays this move, Bishop B2. And then my engine goes from saying 0, 0, 0 to going complete, uh, completely nuts. And it very quickly, it goes up to 0.5. Uh, in White's favor, and just by watching this 64 core uh, Stockfish engine after this Bishop C1 move, presumably getting the Bishop up uh, in an attacking position, uh, the 64 Stockfish uh, course goes C3, which is just so clearly desperation. It's so clear that it has seen something in the future if you just make the normal moves it's going to be a disaster so it plays c3 to kind of distract white on the other side of the board but the thing is that after c3 even a human can win this position because you realize that well now i have all the other good stuff in addition i'm taking i'm taking your pawn so the kind of the advantage you had of being a pawn up has disappeared you still have the open age file the bad pawn structure the um, space advantage for white um, and and um, and alpha go just won in big style and 
look at the bishop on b7. It's just, it's having a miserable time. And we get another endgame, but, but an endgame even Stockfish acknowledges that this is just not going to happen. Uh, this is massively better for white. Yeah, I, I'm not sure why he would give back that pawn, but yeah, everything just collapses. And two pawns up is going to be enough uh, to win the game. Uh, I'm wondering is the Twitch chat is the Twitch chat discussing fortresses because that is interesting. I'm gonna have to take a drink. Yeah, that's interesting. From from a just intuitively, I would think that fortresses aren't. It might be discovered much easier by, by AlphaGo if it's going by a, a simulation and um, giving itself win percentages instead of, um, yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to understand fortresses maybe. Um, Nilok is asking, did they publish more than just 10 games? And that is no. Um, they, they are saying that they are kind of withholding a bit until they get the, um, uh, the paper, the full paper uh, published. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of more interesting chess to analyze uh, as, um, as the weeks, um, in the next weeks, I hope. Okay, so Ship Holler is saying you're discussing trapped pieces. And the way they're evaluated in regular engines and this bishop on b7 being a perfect example of uh, a trapped piece and that there might be some search problems with those positions that yeah the stockfish maybe doesn't appreciate how bad the bishop is on um uh b7 but on the other hand i would think that is something at least an algorithm could cover right that if a bishop is blocked by its own pawns it should be massively punished um yeah i'm gonna go to the to the next game because i saved the best for last uh I think this is my favorite game. Uh, it's a lot of the same themes as uh, the the other games. Okay, so once again, it's uh, positional play that caught my fancy. It's a French defense, and this is kind of the starting uh, pawn structure. Definitely uh, favoring white, uh, having the uh, familiar uh, e5, d4 uh, French structure, uh, which we also saw earlier, and the bishop on c8 not having a good time. Um, and Stockfish went into this. Stockfish went into it. I mean, he, he realizes... Even Stockfish realizes that white is a little bit better here. But he's giving evaluations at like 0.2 favoring white. And probably those evaluations are just plain wrong. Um, so Stockfish even got his opponent's bishop. But uh, AlphaGo doesn't care. He just puts his king on e3. Uh, helping out his uh, central pawns. Uh, Stockfish, none the wiser, still saying 0.10. And now we get the attack going. White goes g4, 
uh, would go f5 if he was allowed stockfish is um, saying that uh, I'm pretty solid I'll just play my bishop back to f8 uh, it's difficult for you to find any uh, point to attack uh, and now he also has the open uh, h file, so he's not really reliant on uh, castling to get the um, the rook into play. Uh, yeah, so uh, my stockfish is saying 0, 0.00 here. Um, here it starts realizing that white is... Um, a bit better but on the other hand black is solid he has the bishop pair uh, he has pawns protecting each other seemingly there's there's not too much of an issue um, and this is uh, there was a comment made on Twitter which which I think relates very nicely to this game uh, which is strategy is just deep deep tactics so strategy is basically getting a good position in which tactics are going to work. Uh, I think that is even an old, um, a saying of the old masters, uh, that um, good strategy uh, gives you good tactical options later on. And, um, and this is an example of that. Uh, black seemingly very solid, very difficult to break down. And then we have the most amazing tactic, uh, striking down. So uh, this position after knight g5, uh, you can go bishop h6, you can go uh, bishop e7. It doesn't really matter because after bishop e7, um, alpha go played bishop takes g6. And I mean, this is this is a display of the amazing tactical ability of AlphaGo, um, but it's not really the attacking chess that a lot of the games that I have ignored uh, has. Uh, this is more kind of deep strategy, and then breaking through uh, the barriers with amazing tactical play. So, so white has achieved uh, an advantageous position, uh, a position where stockfish doesn't really realize the danger, including right now because uh, you know stockfish is evaluating it at um, 0 0.05. Uh, but the big point here, after sacrificing a piece for a pawn, um, and then he goes f5. This is the, the tactical justification. So if, if, if G takes, there's an instant check and uh, the rook comes uh, to win the day. If you take with the E pawn, it's similar because the queen uh, gets access to the, uh, the D6 square to the B6 pawn. Basically, it's big, big trouble. So black is forced to play rook g8. And now the point is uh, after queen h6, threatening checkmate, queen f7, and then f6. It's a pawn for a bishop. But on the other hand, this bishop on b7 not really the greatest piece you've seen and um initially i i let my stockfish run for maybe two three minutes uh it says 0, 0.00 for a very long time but it drops massively uh during the the next couple of moves Um, and the key here is that white, 
why is seemingly just playing on normal moves, right? Rook c1. How do you explain rook c1 to somebody? And this is kind of also my point of, of the, the engine being extremely patient. So I think, I think what happened is that the king had to move back because it wanted to give the queen the option of going using the e3 square. And so in this position, you want the rook to have access to go to the g-file whenever you want. So you go rook c1. And black really cannot do anything. He, he's stuck. He, he cannot really improve his bishop. Um, or his rook or, or queen the, the, the pawn on, on, on f6 is really a thorn uh, and what happens here is queen e3 and my computer goes from saying 0, 0.00 to just very quickly dropping to, to plus 1 for white um, and then kind of when it realizes that the I, th I think the plan here is to go to to a3, forcing queen f8, and then just exchanging the queens. I think is I think white's plan in this position is to exchange queens and win the endgame. Come with the king attacking uh, up towards the g6 pawn. Um, so black plays queen f8 to stop it, but then queen c3 is threatening mate on, on c7. If you go back to f7, then once again, there's this idea of the queen getting in uh, via a3. So he goes queen b4, but then kind of white gets his uh, uh, queen exchange. And uh, uh, here, the even stockfish realizes that it's big, big trouble. My stockfish started at plus one and then pretty quickly came up to plus two. Uh, and at this point, it's already at plus five. Um, so two pawns for a bishop. That's all you need. So the bishop comes back alive uh, to e8, uh, stopping the f6 pawn, protecting the uh, g6 pawn. You would think that that was, uh, that was a good thing. But the thing is that suddenly white is just opening another flank of attack uh, on the other side uh, with the rook coming on the uh, A file and then the king coming over to help queen the, the F pawn. And uh, the bishop is defenseless against uh, this invasion. So, um, yeah, uh, these were the uh, positional games, I would say, of Alpha Zero, um, and which I thought were really, really interesting. I thought they um, there was some kind of position in which uh, Stockfish uh, misevaluated uh, what was going on and was punished very severely uh, for it. Uh, I you really I really recommend looking through all ten games that were published. Uh, among the games I didn't look at were some amazing uh, attacking chess, uh, sacrificing a piece and basically not caring, just to keep developing for four moves afterwards. Um, some fantastic attacking chess fr from AlphaGo, uh, and I think. A lot of people will say that this was not a fair match. Um, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, I, I think that probably um, uh, the hardware difference was pretty significant and, and so on. Uh, so I don't think it was a fair match. But I do think that we have never seen chess being played at a higher level than what Alpha Zero accomplished. And um, that is, after all, I think the most important part uh, that, um, that 
Alpha Go Alpha Zero is kind of opening our eyes to some misconceptions. Uh, basically, Stockfish has been has been the the answer. I mean, if we were saying what is the objective evaluation of a position, we would often go to Stockfish. Uh, and what has happened uh, this week is that uh, Stockfish is no longer the answer. We we need to appreciate that. Uh, there are even attacking positions. Stockfish is the most amazing attacker. Um, as, as an engine, Stockfish is just magnificent at attacking. And yet, even so, uh, it got crushed uh, in some tactical uh, uh, skimmerishes uh, against um, Alpha Zero. Uh, and, and I think that's an illustration of uh, just a new level we have never seen before. It's going to challenge our idea of some positions. Maybe we are going to be more aggressive. I don't know. But I think it's a good sign that Stockfish underestimates uh, some of the attacking chess from Alpha Zero because that means that maybe we can be a bit more crazy. Maybe we can be uh, a bit more aggressive in our normal games uh, with the justification from the computer uh, and not kind of always saying, yeah, it looks interesting, but Stockfish is giving minus 0 0.8. We, we should stay away. Um, yeah. And I also think that, that Alpha Zero seems to have some positional understanding that uh, Stockfish has been lacking. And, and I hope these games have um, been an introduction to to why. Uh, and we have seen the, the black light squared bishop suffering quite a few games. And I think this static pawn structure with d4, e5 um, uh, is going to be uh, be valued. Okay, um, I'm going to be looking at the, the chats for a little while. So if you have a question, this is the time uh, to do it. And, and after that, I'm, um, I'm going to say uh, good night. Grandilu is saying that even at his level, Alpha Zero has inspired him to be to be more uh, crazy. Uh, Shana, Sha, Shana, I'm gonna say, shorten it. Uh, will all the games be available soon? And uh, that is a big question. I don't have the answer. I hope so, uh, because analyzing those games will be really, really interesting. So nobody knows. Well, probably somebody at Google knows, uh, but we're all hoping that um, as many games as possible will be available. Uh, Medutis is, uh, is asking, could it find Shiro's uh, Bishop H3? And I would just say that the way it played end games was just superb. So I'm, I'm going to say it would find Bishop H3 without any problem. Uh, Alpha Zero, does it use regular opening book? No, it, it kind of taught itself openings. So it's using some sort of opening book based on uh, what it taught itself uh, at the beginning. Um, at the beginning of its learning process. Uh, here's an interesting question from uh, NS Guy. Uh, do you think Alpha Zero favoring D4 C4 will change how the opening is viewed? That's very interesting, and and yeah, just the fact that Alpha Zero is favoring D4 or at least has uh, all, all, almost exclusively the white wins we were presented. Uh, were was d4 
uh so um yeah I i'm thinking that uh the the gambits in the queen's indian uh is going to get some scrutin scrutinizing uh the next couple of months because alpha zero had some very nice wins in in that opening um benoni is asking what was its main weapon against e4 and i'm happy to say that that was the berlin my opening berlin uh, was favored by alpha go uh chess bar is asking do you think alpha's self-taught openings or self-taught end games are more impressive for four hours um i don't know i mean it, it it really only spent four hours i didn't really quite understand that uh I, I was reading the kind of paper and it was saying giving a lot of interesting stats about the openings it had played in the training games um so that i thought was very fascinating um yeah but I, I i don't really understand how it works well enough to say what what i i think just the general level of play i was extremely impressed by um catch is asking is there any chances of some defenses to become obsolete um maybe um the you really should check out the 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 paper they published um just a partial paper or, or something um and, and there were some openings which alpha go the the alpha zero tried uh to use and then kind of gradually decided that no this is no good i will i will uh not play this opening a, as often uh, so basically it was playing queen's gambit declined it was playing quite a bit uh but but grunfeld and, and king's indian it was not playing w with the black pieces <laughs> i thought ba is how you pronounce b a e Chess bar, no. Um, Feynman is asking, what kind of style do you think Alpha uh, Alpha Zero has? Um, and he adds, perfection maybe has no style. Um, yeah. No, it's it's just very good. It's a fantastic attacker. It's profound positional play it's it's just very impressive very impressive okay uh, i think my voice is saying that's it for me today um thank you for uh checking out uh my stream today um i'm gonna say that this is not the last we have heard from uh from the the alpha zero engine uh so i'm i'm gonna have more streams uh on this when uh we get more games published i i think that's uh a fair bet uh so um until next time see ya